Thanks for coming on, Josh. We appreciate it. Absolutely. We, Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, we know we're going to put you on the spot and have you talk about all these different types of bows. I know you've been doing your research. You said you were uh, you were conspiring with Trevor, so I'll have to I'll have to hit Trevor with harder questions to make sure that he's ready. Every shooter that comes on here is someone that I leverage as a subject matter expert. If I have questions about shooting or if I have questions about what works for them or what doesn't work for them, you're getting, when I talk on podcast or on YouTube, you're getting my personal experiences or you're getting the experiences of subject matter experts that I leverage. So it's important to me to have those people on here so you can see where I get my information. And some of the things these guys are going to say isn't going to go along with what the average opinion is online. You ready to jump into the 30-30 slide, Josh? Let's do it, brother. So this is the 3030 uh, slide. Every shooter that comes on is going to go through it. Even some of the bowyers will probably go through it, Josh. And this on the bottom x-axis represents the forgiving nature of the bow. And remember, this is approximation. This is me estimating. Now, if I overlaid my data, it would plot out like this, but I don't have any type of software that converts data points into these little graphics. This is me drawing this up and trying to represent each type of bow the best I can. I forgot to add, Josh, the y-axis is performance, 0 to 30. The bottom is for giving nice. 30 points from a Vegas 300 round. And that is definitely approximation because there's some bows that I have here where I'll drop 40 points off my top ILF reg in a Vegas round. But 30-30 sounded cooler than 30-40. So, so that's why it's 30-30. That's why so before I get started, I noticed that there's a couple of them kind of tilted. Is there a reason for that? If you see like a 50 style recurve tilted, uh, that's because of the recurve that's behind. Oh, other hand, the recurve that's behind me here, this Tolkien. That means there's a lot of variation within that type. So there's 50 style recurves that are really slow and kind of tougher to shoot. And then there's 50 style recurves that they beefed up. The 10X, uh, for example, Chinook, the 10X. Uh, version of the SS. Those things are really easy to shoot, and they're right up there with a, you know, a, a PA, a Lee, your standard wingered reflexed uh, recurve. So when you see that, that means there's a lot of variation in that type. 50 style probably has the most variation, just because there are some designs that are from the 50s that are cool, but they're just, they don't hang with them. <clears throat> and with ASLs, I found to be a lot of variation within ASL as well. Not a, God created men equal, but he did not create ASLs equal. So we'll we'll be diving into that. So uh, as I'm starting down on the bottom, I, I've been kind of looking at it as you were talking, and uh, it definitely makes a lot of sense. So uh, I'll kind of go through it, what I think about each one. And you wanted me to discuss the links that I like as well? Yeah, so okay. people can kind of understand so, uh, the decisions you make in your setup. Sure, so uh, we'll just start at the ASL there on the bottom. Uh, that is pretty much just like a modern English longbow. So it's straight stick, straight limbs with a, a kicked out back or front. The grip is just a big gobby, big gobby handle there. Do you have a preference on grip? So uh, I do, um, just because it is my nature. I do like uh, I do like the classic look. I do like straight grip, um, and I do like that. In a 68 inch long bow. Um, I tend to see that the 68, I get to stack a little bit quicker because I am a, a bigger guy. You know, I have a longer draw. And then, of course, the 70 inch isn't too good for me either because at the 68, it's like as soon as I'm getting to that, the back of my draw, where I'm starting to set into that back tension, it's like I'm starting to get to stack. And that's usually where I get to stop. So for me, gotcha. being a bigger guy, longer draw, 68 inches is. Pretty much where I want to be sitting at that. Um, <clears throat> so then we'll move over to the, the mild reflex deflex. Uh, that is pretty much, it has a little bit of deflex right in the in the handle, and then of course it reflects out. It's not too much, but it's still enough that you can see it. And then of course, whenever you string it up, it still has that classic D look. Um, I generally like that to be in a 66 inch, um, mm -hmm. just because it, it works for me. Uh, almost like the same as the ASL. And then, of course, whenever I move on to the reflex, deflex, the hybrid, um, my sweet spot's the 64. That is uh, generally what I hunt with, as well as the ASL, but for the 64-inch hybrid, it, it works out really well for me as far as, uh, you know, stalking on a hunt, 
or crawling around like I, I came back from a hunt not too long ago where I was crawling in brush and thicket and uh, can't really do that with a 68 inch longbow. Right. Um, so <clears> that, there's that. And of course, as far as like the cast and trajectory, it works out really good for 25 yards generally for com some competition. Um, the 50 style recurve, um, I can see where we're starting to get a really large variation on that, like you said. Uh, getting back to uh, where Bear kind of broke us out of that, uh, that style, going into the standard recurve. Uh, that was a big thing. Um, standard recurve, I, you know, I'm just now starting to get really, really in with recurves. Like I said, I'm generally a longbow guy, so there's still a lot to learn about that. But I can definitely tell a big difference in between your standard recurve and your standard ILF recurve. Um, <clears throat> just because there's so many more variances in with the standard ILF recurve uh, that you can really fine tune to yourself. So when you say variances, you mean <clears throat> there's so many things that you can change and tune, right? You, you don't mean there's variances. Of, there's a lot of variation. There's well, there can be a lot of variation, but there's everything you can change or tune or adjust, basically, right? Is what you're trying to say? Right, right, and make it more forgiving to your shooting style. Gotcha. And uh, that's you know, that's generally what as I'm looking at this, you know, as bad as you hate to say it, I mean, ASLs, you you hear that they're the most forgiving bow. They are not the most forgiving bow, in, in, in my opinion. They're really not. So as you're going up this, this scale, let's just look at, like, whenever I think uh, forgiveness, like, what makes a bow forgiving? Number one is the grip, you know. Like, let's just take a hill-style straight grip. Okay, now let's take, like, an Olympic grip, Olympic recurve grip, where it has a nice throat locator where you can rest your right. thumb in, you got something to push on. You can repeat that grip time and time again, with right. something like the recurve, right? Now, if you're grabbing that hill style bow, the straight grip, how do you know you're not a, just ever so slightly up high or ever so slightly down low? That's whenever you start affecting tillers. So, it, you know, you're going to have to be more forgiven with that style of grip. Um, the second thing is like the window, okay? Let's look at a, going back to the high end there, the standard ILF recurve, which you were just holding up. Look at the window on that, you know? Yeah. Versus that thing is a monster. The on the yeah. yeah. So you can I'm probably holding up the best case scenario. I mean, this thing is almost two finger widths wide on the tribute. You can shoot blazer veins out of this dang thing. It's crazy. Yeah. So let's just take that for reference. If you're drawing at like half draw with a center shot recurve and you let right. it go, what's it going to do? It's going to still go straight. It's going to drop right <clears> away, <throat> but it's still going to go straight. I'll do that with a very small window, and you can't go into that window anymore, and you pull it half draw, what's going to happen? It's going to go low left. So you know, it's it's more forgiving that way as well. Um, and then of course, this this is one that I think is overlooked: the draw curve. You know, stat. Uh, that that's really big. I mean, especially for bigger guys like me. You know, if we got like a 30 inch draw, and a bow starts stacking at 28, 29 inches, we're really we are greatly affecting that tiller of that bow. Not as forgiving. You know, and then of course the last thing is a, a deflex and a riser. I mean, the further you go up. In that this chart, you know, deflex is really <clears throat> a key yeah. problem. Yeah, deflex, so I guess, the is deflex. the differentiator. And that's for the folks that are watching, deflex is just a bend in the bow in the design versus you can see here in this uh, ASL is very straight. Yeah, the game has changed, man. So, and that's, that's exactly what Trevor was telling me the other day. He said, you know, ASLs are as forgiving as like an Olympic recurve and why are they in the Olympics? And that's, yeah. a, that's a very true statement. I mean, why not? Yeah, they'd, you know. they'd be in the Olympics. They would be in the Vegas indoor shoot because that's only 20 yards, so you don't need speed. If they were truly forgiving, we would see them on the indoors, and you don't see them because they're not. I'm not the best, best ASL shooter. You are one of the best, if not the best, right up there with Paul. So what I would encourage people to do, if you disagree, we can have you on the show, and you can go live and show us how well they actually shoot next to Josh and I. And if you can shoot them better than us, we'll definitely believe you. I've always said, and I, I agree with it completely, which is why I always say it, the bow's number one job is to inspire you to shoot. You have to want to shoot it. And um, I love the ASL. I want to shoot it well. So I shoot it a lot. <clears throat> but uh, if you were recommending to a new archer where to go, where's the line? Where do you draw the line? Man, in all honesty, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick two just because... <clears throat> 
because you don't know what people are going to want. Um, in all honesty, I'm looking right in the middle standard recurve or replace duplex hybrid. Uh, the reason being is because of price point, and it's right smack dab in the middle of that, what I would consider a forgiving road. Um, and there's so much there. So whenever I think of people that are getting in, into archery, most of the people, you know, they, these guys are working 40 hour jobs like us, you know, and uh, just get to do this on the side. So there's there's so much that can be, uh, there's so much in that price point and, and uh, like that, that is forgiving. So number one, you know, you think of like a Mesa, you know, that's a $300 bow, you know, and it's a really great bow. And then of course, you know, I'm biased. Uh, a really good bow for me, you know, is the Swiss stick from St. Patrick like one bows. It's just, it's really good. And it's, it's the price point is great for what it tests at. And then you get your standard recurve. You can you can get a you know, I think it's a galaxy stage now, but same stage, same thing, black hunter on both the long bow and recurve, that's a hundred dollar <coughs> bow that performs really good. All the way to something like a, a black widow, which is just probably money. So there's so much more right in there and you can use them for hunting or for competition. So I would yeah. point them in that direction. Why would someone want to shoot my life? So whenever you first talk about mild r and I mean, of course, it's not going to put out the speeds, generally speaking, that something like a reflex deflex does. And then, of course, it's not your standard piece of American history uh, in ASL. You know, but what the mild reflex deflex usually does take hold in is quietness. And it does relatively have a good cat. So something as far as hunting, a mild R&D is going to be pretty much money. It's going to be really good. Um, just because, in all honesty, I, well, I thought I had it nearby, but I don't. My Minnesota stick is the quietest bow that I own. And it is just, it, it just makes a small thump. And, you know, 20, 25 yards, you can't even hear that. And the cast is generally, you know, most hunters, they're going to be within 20, 25 yards. So they're going to be as close as they can. You know, so it's, uh, it's, it's really got a great cast and, uh, quietness for, for that. Type of scenario, and it's and it's like sixty six inches, and I think you might even I don't know if you can find them in sixty four, but generally that's that's a good honey. Uh, it's not too big, not too small, so you can hunt out of a stand, and it's probably even a ground blind depending on the style. Gotcha. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's probably the most. I think today when people think longbow, they think R and D hybrid. They don't even think about hill style or mild. <clears throat> and they're they're missing out because there's some really nice designs that have been around for a long time that are just well made, perfectly tillered designs out there and, and well put together mild R&D longbows. But um, I know I fall in love with it. I always tell people the, the shot is very soft. So if I'm blank belling, I love using those things. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's got a very, very smooth draw. I mean, it, it really does. And in my, in, in my personal opinion of it, it's probably one of the smoothest drawing bows that I've built as far as, you know, what I've actually tested so far. Just to summarize, though, like, what's your rough average? If you were going to shoot 20 targets on the same course and we were going to run you through with an R&D, a mild R&D, and a hill style, what would be the on average point gap? So uh, with an ASL, I typically tend to drop a few points. And the reason being is because my gap, tends to fall an extra inch and a half to an, about, a, about an inch to an inch and a half per yard more in those last five yards. So let's just say that my gap with my hybrid is seven inches at 20 yards, okay? My ASL starts to be like six inches at 20 yards, and then it's like four and a half at 21 whenever my hybrid's gap is going to be six inches at 21. So I'm losing more gap so the more that you if, if your yardage is not completely on let's just say you're off by a yard or two you get yarded you're going to tend to drop more points with an asl than say you would with a, a reflex deflex and just because the it doesn't have angle, it doesn't have the flat trajectory right 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 it doesn't have the cast the same cast as say like a hybrid and i think speed has a lot to do Weight. But then the mild reflex deflex, it is literally, it's not the same as the hybrid. It tends to drop a little bit more, say around the 23, 22 to 23 yard mark. And then I get that extra gap or that extra inch to an inch and a half more than what my, my hybrid is. 
So are you dropping two points per target with an ASL and a mild versus an R&D or one? What do you think? On 20 targets, I would say I dropped probably a total of 10 to 12 points overall of the course. So if I shot a 190 with my hybrid, I'd probably shoot a 180 with my ASL. What about your mild? Probably about a 182. Well, they're roughly the same. Yeah, they're pretty, they're relatively close, but the edge would definitely go to a mild reflex. reflex. If you're hunting, if we translate that into hunting, what's your effective, assuming, because I know deer jumpiness and all those good things are coming to play, but what, what's your go, no-go for, because I know I have one, for ASL versus uh, your mild and your R&D? Sure. So generally my ASL, man, I do not want them anything over my point on with that. So it's about 23 to 25 yards me, for my ASL. Um, same thing with the mild reflex reflex. I really don't want to shoot over 25 yards, but with my reflex reflex, my hybrid, I'll actually give myself a go depending on the deer uh, up to like 31, 32 yards. Okay, and we're dealing with it because people are going to uh, freak out about that. <clears throat> we're you got to shoot to your capability. I can assure you that's Josh's capability. Josh shoots a lot. He shoots well. He he, he can handle the bow. Well, and like I said, I mean, I'm I'm in competition year round, and I shoot and I shoot a lot. And uh, well, let's let's talk about that. Know, I, I don't I don't know that people know what a lot means. So, how many arrows do you think you shoot a day? A day? Oh man, uh, you know I've never really counted, but if I had to take an honest guess, I shoot 20 targets every single day, every single day. And then of course I do shoot a little bit beforehand, a little bit after. So I'd probably say about 120 to 150 arrows a day. Yeah, but I'm not out there just flinging arrows. I mean, I'm taking time in between each shot. I, I it's probably about two and a half hours a day. Two and a half hours a day. So these are these are very focused shots. Yep. Very, and I don't group. I shoot one arrow. I walk to my target. I grab it. I reflect on each shot. If you look at any of my videos, there's a clear path where I'm walking to and from. Do you have the ability to move from bow to bow, or do you have to stick with one bow? A lot of this goes into the grip style for me. Like I really like a low wrist. If I switch from like a medium wrist to a, a hill style, then it takes me about a week to really get uh, back in key with it. But most of the time, if I switch from like an ASL to a hybrid reflex reflex, which is generally the two that I'm switching in between, uh, it, it'll usually take me about 20 to 30 shots to get back to where I'm comfortable and starting to build confidence back again where it needs to be with each bow. But, um, yeah, and that's why I like all of this, because I can literally swap between the two relatively easy. There you go. And you just got into ILF a little bit, right? Are you picking up yeah, points I'm going with it. I actually, believe it or not, I, uh, I, I am. Um, I just shot my first bare bow recurve. Uh, it, was like a, it was a state qualifier the other day, and I shot a 285 on, on 30 targets. And it was, it was a stretch course. So it was really surprise, surprising to myself and uh, because of the string walking and using the tip. But it was just like, man, it just zipped them arrows so freaking fast. And they can hit a live arrow better than a longbow can. I mean, when right. I shoot my longbow with a live arrow, it just pow, and it scares you, you know. The right. ILF does too, but it can handle it. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they can open them up. But uh, <clears throat> it's, it's interesting to hear your perspective because you shoot across every one of these. And you shoot them all really well, and you actually have a passion for the toughest shooting one. But uh, I really appreciate you being candid and honest with us and letting us post this publicly because it's not something that gets discussed openly. And I'm sure we're going to get some uh, people that disagree with us. And like I said, we can go live. That's why I did this because I got tired of posting things on Facebook and Instagram. And it's too easy for people to make a comment on social media and not have to back it up here. We can all go live and shoot. We can see what these people have to say. But you and Paul shoot very, very well out of those, out of that lineup. And <clears throat> I think you're great champions for the hill style bows. I think that people that actually say their wrong things about them are going to, are killing their own style because people will go in there and try it, can't shoot it well, and they'll put it down forever. They'll say, oh, you know, it'll rattle your teeth. No one teaches them how to shoot the things. So hopefully, sure. uh, and that's, that's a, yeah, absolutely. 
hopefully people watch this and they can make a choice on where they want to shoot and understand that each bow has its own capabilities and we shouldn't be comparing from one type of bow to another because it's not fair to the design. There's there's several different designs here and there's several awesome bows and bowyers within those designs. And if it's at the top of its game, they're held to the same regard. And, and a top line ASL is as valuable to me as a top line ILF or a top line recurve. And uh, we've got some really jewels nice. in each one of these categories. Yeah. Right, man, something we, to the table. Yeah, every one of them do. <clears throat> I think we've covered everything pretty well, and uh, definitely enough to start some start some fuel to the conversation yeah. and get people thinking. And maybe if someone is shooting hill style and they're ready to quit, get, move up the scale a little bit, get something a little bit more forgiving a try before you bail on us, and give it a shot. I had someone call me today in their first. But, that's right. It's all right. I had someone call me today. Hey, buddy. Uh, How's it going? <laughs> He's like, what's going on? He says, uh, he said, I got my first bow and it's a 58 inch recurve. I'm like, oh, why did you get a 58 inch bow? <laughs> but it is what it is. All right, man. I appreciate you coming on. I think you covered it all well. All right, man. Thanks for having me.